Glenn and I have been talking about the sacrilege that is Worms Rumble, but we've got to give it the switch up treatment and see what he thinks. So he's written this one for us, and well, yeah, let's get into it. Worms Rumble is an online real-time action game and is a spin-off from the more traditional turn-based Worms series. It released in late 2020 on Windows and PlayStation systems and it's now about to, or already has depending on when we make this, release on the Nintendo Switch. Will it worm its way into your heart or should you leave it writhing around <laughs> in the dirt? Thanks to Team17 for the review code. Now, let's find out. Pre-orders are now live on the Nintendo eShop. So for those of you here in Worms and immediately thinking turn-based, team of four, holy grenades and exploding sheep, well the turn-based part is absent here, although some of the other elements you would associate with the franchise are present. This is an online action game, played in real time, where you are loaded into an environment and must kill or be killed. You can play in a few different game modes such as deathmatch, which is an all out battle against everyone else to get as many kills as you can within a set time. Team deathmatch, which works in a similar way except players are divided into two teams. Last squad standing sees players divided into three teams, squad members have a brief moment to revive fallen comrades, otherwise they're out of the game and the area will shrink as time goes on. Finally, there is Last Worm Stand-In, which is very similar, but all against all, and if you die, you're out. Each mode is exclusively online and can be played with up to 32 players at one time. Apart from Last Squad Stand-In, which is capped at 30 to allow for three even teams. Crossplay is featured, and I never failed to find a match when playing for review. I'd generally be waiting around 40 or 50 seconds to play a deathmatch, and maybe 25 to 28 of the 32 available spaces would be filled. It would take about 90 seconds to 2 minutes for the other two game modes and they were rarely filled to a point where they felt worth playing, which is unfortunate, with there only ever being 6 to 12 players. When into a game, you're transported to one of three available maps and placed randomly on the terrain. Arenas are littered with weapon caches that you open by holding down Y, and a lot of the weapons synonymous with the Worm series can be found, such as bazookas, shotguns, hand cannons, as well as the more outlandish ones like the Sheep Launcher. Sub-weapons can be picked up and used by pressing R, and again, they're series staples such as grenades, banana bombs, and holy hand grenades. As well as weapons, other items can be found and used, such as jetpacks or Apple guns, and it's nice to see these included in the game. Not just from the point of view that it's very satisfying to fly out of danger with a tiny sliver of health left and death looking inevitable, but also as it again pays tribute to the series history. Staying out of harm's way for a while will see you begin to restore your health, but there are also med packs that you can collect and use by holding down on the D-pad. The maps are quite large and have a few interactive points, such as elevators and zip lines, plus random events will occur at times, such as areas filling with poison or being affected by low gravity. I couldn't find exactly how many arenas there were mentioned anywhere in the game, but it appears that there are three. I seem to end up in one area a lot more than the others, and it's a shame there's no voting system for where you'll end up. You aim with the right stick, and fire weapons with ZR. Your opponent's health is displayed above their head and you have a kill count in the top left hand corner of the screen for any worms you take out. It also displays your current overall ranking in real time. If you're killed, you'll have to press B to respawn. The matches themselves are actually pretty good fun. Personally, I much preferred the free-for-all nature of deathmatch over team deathmatch as I found that I spent way too much time in these matches walking around searching for opponents. The learning curve is steep especially because cross-play means that a fair few players will have a head start on you if you've never played it elsewhere. But I did enjoy it and found myself starting to improve, at least uh, relatively speaking, after a few goes. Still, it was nice that you could switch off cross-play and just go for Nintendo Switch-only players if you so choose. You gain XP after battles, both for your worm and any weapons you've used, and leveling these up will unlock a variety of costumes, voices and emotes for your worm, and skins for your guns that can then be purchased with in-game currency, which is also earned by natural progression throughout the game. It would have been nice if leveling up your character and weapons served more than just cosmetic reasons. 
Being able to unlock particular perks, for example, this may have made the game a bit more difficult to access for newcomers, but I had little to no interest at all in the leveling system, as cosmetic changes don't really interest me. Some sort of happy medium would have fleshed out the gameplay a little more in my opinion. Gameplay is fun, hectic and ultimately satisfying when you begin to get to grips with it. I would have liked to have seen it fleshed out a bit more, both in terms of mechanics and content, and I'm always wary when these types of games have no single player mode, with bots or local mode at least, but gameplay still gets 14 out of 20. Controls are fine for the most part, with a few moves such as the wall climb feeling a bit alien to begin with, but overall they get 14 out of 20 as well. In terms of the visuals, action is displayed via a 2.5D view. Arenas are fairly large, detailed and include a good amount of tunnels and pathways to keep things interesting. Everything is colourful and wacky, although some of the more iconic weapons feel like a bit of a damp squib when used, generally down to being lost in the carnage that's happening on screen. I didn't have any issues with connection and things rang well enough apart from a few minor ones, with an enemy suddenly skipping a few places towards you for example, but this seems to be down to net issues rather than the game itself. And as far as frame rates go, it maintains 30 FPS almost at all times. When it comes to the audio, there are some nice touches. A few of the voice you can choose from for your worms will be recognizable to fans of the series although there aren't as many as I would have liked. There are DLC packs you can buy which will unlock a variety of skins, voices etc but it's a shame a few more of these didn't come as standard. I also liked how the original worms theme was woven into the faster paced menu music but again it would have been nice if this was utilized a bit more. Other than this music's fast paced and appropriate to the action but generally a little bit forgettable. The voices also don't seem quite as iconic in this real time setting as they once did after a worm spouted one of them having been dragon punched off a cliff. There is an option for voice chat included in the game, I couldn't try it and I'm not sure how it would work but it's there in the menu. Visuals are what you'd expect although a lot of the charm from the franchise is lost due to how manic everything is in this version. You can't appreciate each bounce of a cluster bomb or path of a sheep when they aren't the only things happening on the screen. They're bright and cheerful enough though and get 13 out of 20. Audio does the job, it's exactly what you'd expect bearing in mind the action on screen but never really elevates itself past this and that also scores 13 out of 20. Worms Rumble is going to cost you £10.99 and the regional equivalents are on your screen now. Now on the surface this does seem a very reasonable price just with a few caveats. The lack of game modes would see me lose some interest after a while even with the cheap price in mind and the lack of any sort of single player mode always puts me off in such games unless they are free to play. It's difficult, you could quite rightly argue that these are missing because of the price but the inclusion of a single player mode with bots or a local multiplayer mode would have made these an incredibly tempting purchase and easier recommendations. If you don't care about this and you're happy to live for today and not worry about server shutdowns, plus I will mention that the fact it offers crossplay is a big plus, then add a few more points on here but for me value scores 13 out of 20. To conclude, Worms Rumble is an interesting take on the series incorporating classic elements from it into a battle royale format. It offers short bursts of action and a few different game modes, although not quite enough for me. The last squad and worm standing mode are quite empty, which almost whittles it down further in terms of your realistic game options, which is a shame and only really left deathmatch modes as being busy enough to get the adrenaline pump in properly. If you've got a few friends that already own it, the cross-play makes it an attractive option and for the price it's going for, you could definitely do a lot worse in this scenario. Overall, Worms Rumble gets a switch-up score of 67%. Thanks as always for Glenn for writing this one. Let us know down in the comments if you enjoy the game. I think personally I've had a few goes just to get the frame rate footage and it's not my cup of tea at all. I definitely agree with that overall 67% score. Not bad, just not great. Thanks to our patrons who support us each and every month and to all of you that watch the channel. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!